What a wonderful service that we're having today. Amen? I'm excited. Romans 7 is something that we've been going over, and we've been in the book of Romans for several weeks, or probably a little bit more than that. But we're here in Romans 7 on the back end, starting in verse 14 today. And it's a powerful, very powerful chapter because it deals with the life of a Christian. It deals with the struggle of the faithful. You know, sometimes we don't realize it, but people struggle. Christians struggle. We think, well, if I go to church and I get saved, the devil is just going to leave me alone. We look at other people and we think, well, they're, they're holy or they're righteous. I wish I could be more like them. But you better be careful what you wish for. <laughs> so I'm excited because... Today we're going to speak about the struggle of every believer to live an empowered life. But there is an empowered life for every believer. Amen? And sometimes we, we get frustrated with ourselves. Have you ever been frustrated with yourself? Have you ever said, I'm going to do this and the next day, I mean, you didn't even last 24 hours full and you didn't do it <laughs> I'm never going to eat sugar again I'm giving up donuts you know that's something light hearted but sometimes we struggle with bigger things sometimes it's not just the substance it's more uh, or less our personality traits that hurt other people sometimes it's the hidden sins that are more powerful than the sins that are exposed. And so we, we make these proclamations, we, we make these resolutions to overcome. But we sometimes will fall short in our journey. And it causes people to want to give up. It causes people to want to just quit. Why bother going to church? I'm not like all of those other goody two-shoes in the church. You see, that's where the devil comes in because he likes to make you think that everybody's thinking about you in the same manner that he is speaking in your ear. And so if he can get you to believe that and cause you to just sort of step out, it's not that you need a church building to be saved. But the Bible clearly tells us that part of this journey, part of this process of sanctification requires your brothers and sisters in Christ. So it says, even when you see difficulty coming, you know, even more so, do not forsake, do not stop fellowshipping with your brothers and sisters in Christ. You need to be with like-minded people. And so I want you to know, and I want to encourage you today, if you've ever been frustrated, if you've ever uh, just wanted to give up, if you ever felt like you just can't get things right, then guess what? You're, you're not alone. You're with a whole group of people because trouble will come and, and there will be times of temptation and there will be times that we'll fall short and and uh, I'm not just saying that we'll just give in to those things because that's not what I'm, I'm saying. So let's go to the scripture and read uh, Romans 7, 14. So the trouble is not with the law. We've been talking about the law. Last week we learned that we are dead to the law. The week before we learned that we are dead to sin. And so here we come to this portion of Romans and we find out that there's still an issue. So it says, so the trouble is not with the law, for it is spiritual and good. And here Paul says, he said, the trouble, get ready for it. He said, the trouble is with me, for I am all too human. A slave to sin. I don't really understand myself. 
I mean, I don't know if I'm the only person that's ever thought of that. I just don't understand what's wrong with me. What is the problem? I can't do what I want to do, what I know I should do. I need to get up in the morning at 6 o'clock. 6.30 rolls around and I've hit the snooze. We get frustrated, right? Because we're not perfect. Sometimes we, you know, it's not, it's not just a matter of, of, you know, what is sin and what is not. It's about everything. Our carnality, our, human, our humanness, it just makes us imperfect. And so Paul says, I am all too human, a slave to sin. I don't understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. But if I know what I'm doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good. So I'm not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. Now sometimes we want to say the devil made me do it. It was the devil. No, it's the carnality that's within you. It is sin living in me that does it. So I am not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it, and I know that nothing good lives in me. That is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I cannot. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, this is a lot to think about. I am not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. I have discovered this principle of life, that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all of my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to sin. That is still within me. Oh, what a miserable, oh, what a wretched man or person am I. I will, who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God. Praise the Lord. The answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is in my mind. I want to obey God's law, but because of my nature, my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. So the trouble we, we found out already, we've been going through Romans. Paul does a, an excellent job at, at explaining the fact that the trouble is not with the law, for, for it is spiritual, it is good. But, but the issue is it is a spiritual law for a carnal person. And the issue is, is that God is love. The law is perfect but it does not restrain. You see, we hear a lot and we've heard a lot about being uh, made slaves and captives to sin. But, but God is love. It is the opposite of the, the nature within us that wants to do evil, that is wicked, that wants to fall short, that wants to, you say, well, I'm not wicked, I've never murdered anybody, but, but we'll do things uh, to get ahead, we'll lie, we'll cheat, we'll steal, and, and there, are, there are things that we'll do that we'll act selfishly every time we drive by someone that is in need. Guess what? You have acted against God's law. And the issue is, is like Adam and Eve, sometimes I wonder why didn't God go down, descend down from heaven with a shout and slap the fool out of that serpent? Why did he not restrain Adam and Eve? Why did he not restrain me? Why did he not restrain you when I accepted him? Why did not God hold me from doing what is wrong. 
Because love does not take by force. And the problem is not with God, which a lot of people like to blame God for the evil and wickedness of this world. We want to know why God doesn't do this or doesn't do that. Because he allows us free will. He does not restrain us. God did not give us his word. God did not give us his law. And God did not give us his son so that we could be captive and slaves to him. Lord, he gave us his His son so that we could be set free from sin and bondage so that we could enjoy the eternities of what he has prepared for us. And so it's not with the law and with God, it's with our sarkikos, which is the ancient Greek word that describes things that characterize the flesh. And in Romans 6, we learned uh, that we've been set free from the bondage of sin, but we have not been set free from this flesh can I get a witness if you're breathing today you could witness that hallelujah but the problem is is that sometimes we get frustrated because we appeal to the law without realizing it we we want to do better we want to do what's right. We hear what Paul is saying. He says, I know the law. Paul was an expert in the law. He, he was, that's what he was basically saying. I know the law. I love the law. I want to do what is right. But, but I don't do it. I want to restrain myself. But something within me that, that's warring against what I know I should do. And this is why a lot of us get frustrated and we give up and we quit and we, 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 we take a sabbatical and we go out and live uh, wild and free and, and then we, we, we come to the end of that and we realize we've made a mistake so we go back to church and we try to go back and appeal to the law and we try to quit these things and do what is right and, and walk the line and, and be good boys and girls. But then we fall short again and we're frustrated. You see, the problem is that, that we appeal to the law in order to follow God. But, but as we learned last week, God has set us free to serve Him, not by the letter of the law, not because He has restrained us from, from doing what is wrong, but because He has set us free. In Christ, we've been crucified, uh, and we have died to sin, and we have died to the letter of the law, and today we are resurrected in Christ, not bound by the law, not bound by sin, uh, but bound by love. We have been called to live the resurrected life, that life that is in Christ Jesus. Paul said it best when he said, it is not me that is alive, but it is him that lives within me. And, and, and you know, sometimes we, we hear that and the carnal mind doesn't jive with that uh, because it, it makes us think that, you know, Jesus is going to take over and we're going to become robots. But that is contrary really to what the Bible is saying because God doesn't possess anyone. Uh, he fills people. He walks with people he, he changes people but we've got to be the one to receive the good things of God yes and amen every promise in the word is mine every jot every tittle and guess what empowered living is one of those promises you see if you're arrested for a crime that you committed how many's ever committed a crime you got any confessions <laughs> Sometimes I, I do that and I get some confessions, you know. That way I can mark it down. No, I'm just, I'm teasing. <laughs> you know, if you've ever been arrested for something you did, if I go out and rob a bank, we, I like to talk about bank robbing. Maybe that's one of my, you know, wish lists, you know. <laughs> if you go out and rob a bank, you don't want to appeal to the law, do you? 
Because I want to tell you something. If you go out and rob a bank and, and you stand in court and you try to appeal to the law, and they got your mug on, on camera and they've got video footage, HD, uh, all of the good stuff and every jot and tittle on your face and, and, and mannerisms and you walked in with your ID showing and all that good stuff and you're guilty, baby, you don't want to appeal to the law because the law will be against you. Abraham Lincoln once said, the man who represents himself uh, has a fool for a client. And when we want to live a life of freedom, when we try to, to, to live by our own strength, we're literally representing ourselves, and, and we're appealing to the law. We're trying to do right. We're trying to do better. We're trying to do it by our own strength. And when you do that, I'm going to work harder. I'm going to pray harder. I'm going to fast longer. I'm going to go to church more. And I'm going to do all of this. And instead of really trusting in God for, to, to bring the transformation and the change, we are trusting in our own strength. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with doing those things. But when you're motivated to do better by, by changing yourself in your own strength, then you have become your own attorney when you have an attorney in heaven. The best uh, advocate, uh, 1 John 2, 1 says, My dear children, I am writing this to you, that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate in, in heaven. His name is Jesus. And he pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. Now, this is not a, a suggestion to, to give up, because if, if you want to know everything in context, you need to read the rest of that. You see, those that like to live in sin, they, they pull that verse out, and they say, well, you know, I, I've, got, I've got grace, I'm standing in grace, and, you know, praise God, hallelujah, and, and they just go ahead and sin. But the Bible tells us that the blood of Jesus is not something to clean the dirt off of our feet with. Uh, the blood of Jesus is precious, and what he's done is very precious. This is not a suggestion that we stand in grace and just willy-nilly sin uh, because it says that those that live in Christ in, ver in verse 6 of that same chapter they should live their lives as Jesus did you see it's not that we are appealing to the law it's not that we are appealing to the the things that we know by the law by God's word we love God's word and, and you're here I know you love God's word I know you love going to church I know that you want to do what, what is right but you're like Paul, I know what I want to do, I know what I should do, but sometimes I just mess up and I wonder what's going on. Why do I keep doing these things? Uh, well, I'll tell you how you can overcome that. When you go to the advocate who is Jesus, when you go to him, uh, it is by his power, it is by his strength, uh, it is by the, the power of the Spirit that our minds are changed and transformed uh, and we grow. This is not uh, a license to sin but it is a, a freedom to give yourself to God and trust in him that he will help you to overcome and grow and be a new creature in him. Amen? So we need to stop struggling in our own strength. Paul said, I don't understand myself, you know. I know what I'm going to, you know, what I want to do. We, we heard all that. It's a mouthful. Try reading that in the King James Version twice. <laughs> if you can read that in the King James Version fast, then I got a job for you as an auctioneer. We've got the knowledge. There are people here that know the Word of God. We got the knowledge. We, we know what, what's right and what's wrong because we have access to knowledge. We, you know, we, we're living in a time that we have access to knowledge like there, there's never been. You go back to the pharaohs, the kings and queens of, of antiquity, and, and they had nothing on the knowledge that our eight-year-olds have today. Amen? Our children have access to knowledge. But guess what? 
that knowledge hasn't made the struggle any less real. Matter of fact, today, and I, I want you to be praying for, for Israel, and I want you to be praying for those, all of these countries that are involved. We, we are in, in a very serious situation. Iran launched missiles and drones and, and Jordan and all of them. We need to pray for peace. Hello? We need to pray for peace before our sons and daughters start marching off into war. No matter what, you, what side you're on, what political stance you have, you better pray for peace in the Middle East. You better pray for the peace of Israel because if this continues on, we'll be in a massive war. And it'll take a long time to get over it and get out of it. We have access to the knowledge, but we still can't have peace here in 2024. I remember back when I was a child or a young person, all of the wonderful lofty ideas that people thought it would be like in 2024. But now we got young, young men dressing like ladies. That's our advancement. Hello. That's the big issue today. Don't misgender me. You've got to understand my pronouns or know them before you even meet me or know who I am. Right? It gets quiet because these are hot. I mean, it blows my mind. This is the hot topic of 2024. Mind-blowing. We got, we got mothers that are telling their three-year-olds, my, my three-year-old thinks he's a girl. Well, I don't want to misgender. They, they're a girl. A three-year-old doesn't know what they are. Hello? We, we thought we would have peace under wraps. I remember my generation thinking, man, the boomers, they are all war hungry and war pigs. And here we are, 2024, I'm 53 years old, and we're in more war than we've been in my entire life. Like my whole life, there's been war, wars and rumors of war. Sounds familiar of what Jesus talked about. Over 50 million people lost their lives in World War II, uh, and, and that was just a portion. And that's why I say we better be praying for peace. We know how to be healthy. We have more access to knowledge, so we know how to, there's not a person in this room that doesn't know how to lose weight. Hello? There's not a person in this room. I was... For, for those of you that haven't known me, I used to be 355 pounds. That's, that's five foot eight of, of tree stump, baby. I used to sell shade for a living. I, I, I mean, I was a big boy. And every day, every night, I would look at myself in the mirror and say, tomorrow's going to be different. And I'd get up. And I'd eat everything all over again and then some. It wasn't until I made the, my mind that I, I became determined. And I lost well over 100 pounds. I kept it all, thank God. We know how to be financially responsible, but we're in more debt than ever before. We know how to save money. We know how to live reasonable, reasonably. We know how to do it. We got the knowledge. Right at our fingertips. But what's wrong with me? We know how to overcome addictions. We know how addictions can be destructive. You can go on, on your, your phone right now and see the destruction and, and the sorrow and the pain that addictions cause to alcohol and drugs. And yet we, we still do it. I saw somebody the other day that had addiction to fentanyl and they, they had, it was mixed with something and they, got the, they had the flesh rotting disease and, or disorder. I, I don't even know if it's a disease, disorder, or syndrome. All I know is this guy's flesh was, was being consumed from the inside out. And, and, and the guy that was talking to him said, you know, you just got to stay off the fentanyl. He goes, I know it's hard, but that's what you got to do. But yet people die 
Every day, our family's life has been touched by fentanyl. We know that it's dangerous. But why? We have the tools that help us to overcome personality traits that are toxic, yet we continue on. The struggle, and I'm not saying this is, is to, to make anyone feel bad. What I'm saying is, is that the struggle is real. We continue to struggle. We continue to war. We continue to battle. We continue to battle against those powers and principalities that, that want to us to continue on the path that we used to be on to return to the vomit to go back to the letter of the law to follow and try it by our own strength why does the devil want that because he knows you'll fail you'll give up and you'll walk away but what God's wanting you to do is to trust him and trust him wholeheartedly that he will cause a change in you It's not, it's, we have the desire, it's evident, we, we're here today, amen, praise the Lord, we made it to church, mark off, your, you've got your brownie point from Jesus today. Go treat yourself afterwards. It's not that we lack the love of God, we, we just, we're just trusting in the wrong person. Because when we, when we trust in ourselves, in our own strength, then it's not God that's, that's working in us, it's, it's us. It's, Paul said in verse 20, but I do what I don't want to do. I am not the one doing it. I'm not the one doing wrong. It's not, it's not copying out. It's not saying, you know, I have no responsibility. But, but he's recognized that, that, that carnality, that, that flesh, that, that thing that's still within us. He said it is the sin that's living in me that, that causes this. And we say we, we, we don't want to give up. Well, let me, let me retract that. Yes, you do need to give up. You need to give up and give it to God. Why? Because the answer in verse 25, he said, the answer, this is the, the, the true answer. And, and he said, thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I, I really want to obey God's law. But because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. Romans 8, we're going to go to the next chapter. Praise the Lord. So now, there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus, and because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you, set free completely from the power of sin that leads to death. Thank God that Jesus is the answer. So this morning, you may be here, you may be completely frustrated with yourself you may have wanted to give up you may and it doesn't matter what it's about you may be frustrated uh, uh, simply about losing weight let me tell you something quit relying on your own strength haven't you already found out that you aren't going to do it why don't you give it to God why don't you say God I give up uh, I know that you are the answer I know that you can help me do all things I know that no weapon formed against me will prosper because you are with me and I know it is in your power that my mind will be transformed uh, to bring me to a place where, where from where I am to where I am not uh, and I I will be a new creature in Christ Jesus, not within myself. So know today if you've accepted the Lord, you belong to him. And that life-giving spirit dwells in you. It has set you free from the power of sin. It has set you free from the letter of the law. It has set you free from, from being so frustrated about the struggles. Uh, quit uh, allowing the enemy to, to, to dog you, make you feel like you're not worthy. No, I am not worthy, but the Lamb is worthy. And because He lives, I live. And because He's righteous, I am righteous. And because He is worthy, I am worthy. Why? Because I live in Christ Jesus. And it is not me, that sinful character, that is going to rule my destiny and my future. It is Christ Jesus that is leading me to victory every day. So we like to say nothing is impossible with God. So how about believing that for your life and your struggle? 
God is greater than your struggle. Amen? Let's stand. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You walk out of here free. Sometimes we struggle with this condemnation. Guilt. Yes, you've done it. Go on. Repent. Move along. Give it to God. Quit saying, I'm going to do better. Because no, you won't. You give it to God. And, and, and you, you quote that scripture. Paul said, I asked the Lord to remove the thorn from my flesh. Uh, this thing that was afflicting me. He, it's not just a, a, an actual thorn that he's speaking about. But it's something that is, that is bothering him. That is, he's struggling with. And, and the Lord said, my grace is sufficient. We've got to begin to recognize that it is His grace that has saved us. And, and it was His grace, not our works. So it's His grace that is sufficient in the struggle. And His strength is made perfect in our weakness. And, I, and this is what I'm going to close with. There have been, been times in my life that I, I've been in situations that I needed help. And men... You can testify to this. For a man, that's hard to do is to ask people for help. Some of you ladies may be the same way. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a woman. I know it's 2024. <laughs> but for a man to ask for help, to cry out, takes a lot. It takes giving up. It takes recognizing there's nothing I can do to get out of this. I need help. And that's what we need to do today. We need to recognize that we can't fix the, the, the flesh. I can't fix the character flaw that's in all of us. I wish I could. But then you wouldn't need Jesus, right? And still, even then, if I could, so, some of us, we wouldn't trust old Phil, would we? But you can trust in Jesus because he will never lie to you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will always answer the call of his people. And so today, quit, quit being frustrated so much with yourself and just, just give up and say, God, I'm not saying just, just give up and go sin. I'm saying just give up and say, God, I'm trying. I, I've been trying, and I'm sorry. I didn't realize I didn't have the strength. Because if I had the ability to fix the, the carnal nature of man, then we wouldn't need Jesus. But we did need Jesus, and he came. And so why don't you just trust him in the process? Because if you do, you will see. Give it five years, you will see in five years. You may go through quite a bit of stuff. But you will be a different person on the other end. You will be a changed person. You won't be the same. You will be completely different. Uh, and you will have a different perspective. Why? Because he has come and he has completely renewed your mind, your thinking, the way you see things. And, and you will have strength that you did not know you have. Amen? And the things that you struggle with today will be of the past. And you'll be like, I don't know when it happened. But something happened, and I got strong today. I got up and said, no! And I didn't do it. And that's exactly what happens, amen? When you trust in the Lord and not yourself. Let's, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. That today, if you need prayer, you need salvation, I want you to know that we're here to pray for you. These altars are open. These altars are open. And, and if you need salvation, don't hesitate. Don't feel embarrassed. This is a, we're, we're a family. We're a family, and guess what? Families that are healthy like to grow. We need some more, we need some more people in the family. Amen? We need to grow. We need to be fruitful. We need to multiply. So just come down. We'll, we'll pray with you. No big deal. We want it. We want you to be a part of this family. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the sufficiency of your grace and your strength. And Lord, I pray for those that have been very frustrated. 
been trying so hard within their own strength to, to do what is right. Not, not because we, we want to be better, but better than other people, but we just, we, we want, we long. And, and God gave us this word, and he prepared us to do what is right. Lord, we want to be Sometimes we feel like giving up. Lord, I pray right now that you'll help us. We give ourselves to you. We cast our cares upon you. We put every weight upon you. It is simply too much. I can't fix myself, but God, you can fix me. You can heal me. You can deliver me. You can can pick me up, Lord, because I am weak and I'm falling. I need your help. So we thank you for that today. We thank you for your wonderful love. We thank you that you are good. We thank you that you hear the cry of your children and you respond. I pray for those that are here in this front. If you, if you have somebody that you know down here, or God tells you, I want you to come and pray. I pray for these at the front, Lord. Help them to be set free. Help them to quit kicking themselves every day. Help them to just give it to you, Lord, and trust in you and depend upon you. Help them, Lord, to live like you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. say